Do you smoke weed? Come on, be honest. All right, full disclosure, I tried it once when I was 17, but don't worry, I didn't inhale. Should you smoke weed? Yes, it seems like every state in Western culture is making it permissible. Leave a weed. That's the way to do it. But is it beneficial? Or worse yet, are you actually engaging in something much darker? Before you take your next hit, trip, or high, you need to consider that there may just be a connection between hallucinogenic drugs and the demonic. But to find out for sure, you're gonna have to watch this video. Let's get into it. What was the last psychedelic <clears throat> trip you had? Any I did mushrooms a couple months ago. Yeah, how yeah. was that? Awesome. You're like shaking hands with the angels, but you're not like going, going to the other dimension. But if you take enough, that's where you go. And have you done LSD? Yes. And good? Yes. Great experience? Yeah. I, have I you think had a bad experience on that? No, no. I mean, I've seen <clears throat> a lot of people have bad trips. Some of the worst trips I've ever seen people have was from edible pot. When you eat it, it's a completely different animal. Yeah. Literally, like physiologically, it's a different animal. Really? Yeah, it's, it creates something called 11 hydroxy metabolite that's five times more psychoactive than THC. All right, we got to set the groundwork for what has been established as a drug culture in the 1960s and 70s. People were rejecting traditional values, much of which revolved around the Judeo-Christian culture. In this country, I think the history of it, you probably can go back and see that uh, drugs were in specific areas with certain cultures. Uh, throughout the history of the United States. The drug culture that we're faced with today, I think we can start back in the 1950s, basically, with the beginning of uh, rock and roll and Elvis Presley and, and the drug problem he had, but was just opened up in gigantic proportions in the 60s and 70s with the whole new counterculture, Woodstock Nation, Timothy Leary assault on American values in Judeo-Christianity. So from that assault, you had a whole counterculture that was developed. You saw Leary bringing in aspects of ancient occult rituals, spiritualities, out-of-the-body experiences, a whole book on how to create the trip on LSD or whatever hallucinogenic drug you were going to use, and uh, how to invite spirits from the other world into your occult uh, environment there. So from that momentum, you started to see artists come out, poets, composers, songwriters, uh, literary figures, starting to create more and more of this drug culture phenomena from occult spirituality. Now, there were obviously many social and psychological causes for Americans at the time, which led them down this dark path into psychedelic drugs. But one of those things, or people, was Timothy Leary. He was a Harvard psychologist who believed in treating people with LSD. LSD comes from a chemical compound that is derived from wild mushrooms. And according to Leary, people could have their own spiritual experience and find the healing that they needed from the bondage of Western religion, in particular Christianity and some of the social norms that keep us captive too. We saw a situation in the United States in the early 1950s where legal organization, the ACLU, started to move in the courts and all the way up to the Supreme Court on issues of God, praying in school, uh, even the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag, taking God out of the culture. And that had a big effect on preparing the youth to be very rebellious. Uh, we had order on a higher level uh, within the government and within the churches, but the youth seem to be able to look right through the hearts and souls of what was taking place in this 
God-fearing capitalist society and seeing that there was a lot of hypocrisy. Lo and behold, here comes a, a new high priest, Timothy Leary, and he was funded by the U.S. government to do research on hallucinogens and the effects uh, that they had on the mind. Leary himself, to get a lot of his understanding and knowledge, went out throughout the world and started to research certain types of uh, primitive tribes that are still in existence today and researching other occult type tribes from the past that aren't in existence anymore, trying to pull in as much as he could on a spiritual reality of that and create his own new ministry for the population, the youth population especially, to turn on to the drugs and drop out of society completely. So that was the mantra turn on, drop out. And that's what was taking place on a massive scale with the youth in this country. Now, Leary was a bit of a controversial figure, being literally exiled from the United States at one point, arrested over 30 times because of his association with what people saw as a strategic overthrow of the American system, even gaining the attention of the president, Richard Nixon, at the time, calling Leary the most dangerous man in America. We had a bunch of anarchists that uh, were followers of Timothy Leary that started this whole yippie movement, political hippies. And uh, they became very oriented toward communism and guerrilla warfare and the violent overthrow of the government. So, and the same mantra was said, the way that we're gonna do this, we're building this army, join us, turn on to drugs, LSD, and uh, drop out of society. And they put out books on how to survive in this culture that we're creating without having a job. So everything was how to rip people off, how to get over, how to sell drugs, so on and so forth into this new culture. And they were gonna become the vanguard, the support, the armed defense of the Woodstock Nation. He developed a book called The High Priests, and that became the Bible of the Woodstock Nation, the Bible of the counterculture, specifically, saying this, my main objective is to overturn Judeo-Christian culture. Leary himself frequently appeared in media opportunities like this one, where he took the time to express his dislike for the Judeo-Christian worldview. Now, our job tonight, what we're trying to do is to reawaken in you a hunger for the visionary quest to hurl medicated barbs into your brains. Sounds good. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. Now, the cause for this doom and gloom thinking the manual of apocalypse and death is the Judeo Christian Bible. But I love it, the Bible because it tells you, it lays it right out to you. The, the God of the Bible is a mean tempered, bad uh, tempered, jealous, paranoid, mafio godfather. Now, Jehovah said, Go for it, Adam and Eve, but there's one thing you can't do there's some food and drug regulations in the Garden of Eden. Food and drug regulations in the Garden of Eden. So Leary, from his understanding of the occult spiritualities, the other types of religions and influences of tribes and so forth, would get into who the shamans were, who the witch doctors were, who the sorcerers were. So he actually put in his book, High Priest, on how to prepare yourself spiritually to allow these entities, these spiritual entities, to come in after you have taken these LSD or whatever other hallucinogen you were taking at the time. The leaders of the Yippie movement themselves came out and believed that they actually were being led by spiritual entities from the other world to create a violent revolution. Now, you may or may not know Timothy Leary or have ever heard of him, but I think the one thing that you can see is the impact that this has had on all of us in Western civilization. Well, we see in the book of Revelation specifically the role that drugs played, especially in pagan culture, of drug use in the end times playing a major role in deception of a population to block the light of God out and allow the spiritual darkness to reign in people's hearts and souls. Revelation chapter 18 verse 23 actually says this, by your magic spells, 
the nations were led astray. The word translated as spells in our modern Bibles is the ancient Greek word pharmakia. Drugs have been around since ancient times, and this word pharmakia is what the ancients used to describe them. They also had a connection with the occult and included witchcraft, spells, hallucinogenic drugs, and carried with them the idea of the connection to demonic entities. As much of a problem as there was in this country, off and on between the politics of the country, you still have the cohesion of a Judeo-Christian culture that kept this country together. And that was totally blown apart in the 60s and the 70s and set the groundwork for what we see today. Where the ideas expressed in Revelation actually stem from are some pre-Christian apocryphal writings. And when you study the New Testament as a whole, it seems like these writings, like the book of Jubilees and the Book of Enoch were foundational for the New Testament authors. What's crazy about all of it is that these books describe how we came to see many of the perversions that we see in our world. The ancient Jews reinterpreted the narratives of their time and before by explaining that the gods of the nations were really fallen angels who taught humanity all of the bad things that we see in our world and perpetuated sin. In the mind of the ancient Jew. This is why we see death and destruction. It's why it seems like sometimes the devil is winning, even though he's not. It's because these fallen angels taught what they knew to sinful fallen humanity. And it's within this same framework that we see the origin of demons as these fallen angels slept with human women, procreated giants who in turn became the disembodied souls of what we now call demons. Yes, these were the same demons that Jesus cast out of people. In fact, this is one of the underlying messages of the Gospels. It's that Jesus is the Son of God because he even has power over the supernatural. Check out what the book of Enoch has to say about the supernatural origins of hallucinogenic drugs. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates, and there arose much godlessness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. So here's the crazy thing about all this, is that these terms, root cutting, potions, pharmakia, they refer to ancient pagan sorcery, and the use of these potions and medicines for a mentally altered state. To the people and scholars that try to make you believe that the only reality to the body is chemical reactions in the brain. That is a ideology of materialism, and that plays right into Marxist philosophy and, and atheism, that you don't have a soul. There is no God. You have no human soul. Everything has to do with material, physical processes, and that those processes that take place in the mind have evolved from other more primitive states, which, again, that's a big controversy, is Darwinism versus Judeo-Christianity. And I think that's one of the crucial foundations, especially in this period, to win back an educational process that's guided by the Holy Spirit and God and not satanic forces. Obviously, no one is advocating that drugs of any kind should not be used to treat things like illness. However, it's obvious with what we've seen in the realm of psychedelics that these things have had a negative impact on many, many thousands of people over the last half century. I had many friends, and many friends through the drug culture. Some committed suicide, some OD'd, some were shot and killed in drug deals, some were uh, shot and killed in robberies. Uh, some died in prison from beatings and so forth. That is the result of not allowing God into your life. I was a part of the whole Woodstock generation. Not only a Woodstock hippie, but uh, I actually became one of the anarchists in the streets that were ready to overthrow the government and believe that uh, this materialistic communist way of, of Karl Marx was going to be the way to go and the spiritual reality that could be connected with that through the high priest Timothy Leary. I was partying with a motorcycle gang. This motorcycle gang had one person that was 
a researcher and knew everything that could be known at that time about Charles Manson. So he's got a bunch of drugs. We're, we're doing drugs together and sitting down and he's raffling off on and on and on everything about Charles Manson, uh, spirituality and where Manson was influenced by certain music by the Beatles and so forth. Uh, the next thing I know, I'm going through uh, something like a, uh, a vacuum and it's taking me out of my body. And I'm going farther and farther into space. And uh, it, I don't know if it was uh, a, a perception physically that I had that it was getting very cold, but I was starting to get colder and colder. And all of a sudden I get to this point and uh, there's this voice that comes to me. And I can only say it must have been this Holy Spirit or God somehow trying to relate to me, saying, get back into your body, get back into your body. So all I had to do is will it, thinking I went back in my body, and I felt like I was going the speed of light back into my body, and all of a sudden I feel that my soul hit my body, and I'm laying there, and my heart is just... I thought it was going to explode. Later on, when I started to get my foundation back and started to read the Bible, when I was thinking about that situation, the verse of the Bible that came into mind was fear, where it would be cold and there would be a lot of gnashing of teeth. And uh, I'm thinking, now that's a place nobody wants to spend eternity in. Are you a Christian? Do you believe in the authority of the Bible? Do you believe in the narrative that Jesus cast demons out of these people and the ancient Hebraic understanding of where those demons came from, where sin came from, and how it was multiplied on the earth? If it is, it's worth considering. Hallucinogens, recreational drug use is something that you should stay away from because you may just be dealing with the demonic. Every life that has the possibility to come into this world is a life that's sacred, that God is giving that life as a gift, and that if we don't accept it like a gift in the sacredness that God gave it, then we're going to be lost in wailing and in confusion and chaos and eventually in a situation that we're separated from God possibly for eternity if it's not turned around. I don't just want to leave you there. I want to tell you about the hope that exists in the person of Jesus. I want you to know that you can know him and that you can have a relationship with him. He's not going to leave you chasing your next high, but the eternal life that he offers you is something that will never run out. I think that's pretty cool. As a Christ follower myself, I can say that Jesus has never let me down. It's funny that we say it that way, isn't it? Especially in light of this current conversation. Jesus will always be with you, and there's just something special about knowing him. I want to encourage you to get to know Jesus. Instead of just pursuing earthly pleasures, put your hope in the Lord. This message especially applies to young people. In a day and age where there are so many things at our fingertips, and social media just puts them right in our pockets, you can have and know Jesus for free. In fact, that's what he offers you, is the gift of eternal life and the resurrection from death one day. That's a pretty good deal last time I checked. All he asks is your faith. Just believe in him and he will raise you up at the last day and he will give you the assurance that he's with you. One of the ways you can be assured is through reading his word. That's the written record that we have of his life, of his teachings, of the history of God's working with mankind through the nation of Israel and even how things came to be. The Bible also tells us why the world is so messed up. And so what's great is it leaves us with this knowledge, this hope, this assurance that God's going to make it all right one day. And that's what he's going to do for you when you put your trust in him. In fact, if you've never done that before, all you have to do is express faith. So there's a way that we Christians do this. We just encourage you to say a prayer to God and express your faith in the Bible. Express your faith that he died for your sins. And when you express that faith, God will give you the peace in your heart. It's a peace you don't have to pay for because the debt's already been paid. So say this prayer with me right now. If you've never done this before, I believe God will change your life through it. And I really mean that. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I invite you to come into my heart with your Holy Spirit and change me on the inside so that I can live for you and not just be the person that the world 
tells me. But Jesus, I want to receive your promise of a resurrected body in a new heaven and a new earth one day. And I believe that I will. I give you my heart right now as an expression of my faith in you. Amen. If you said that prayer, then you can know that you know God. I want to encourage you to take the next step and join a local church where God will help you to become the kind of person that he wants you to be, a person that represents his character to your friends and family. No, you won't be perfect. Nobody is. That's why he died for you. But I will tell you from personal experience, there's nothing like knowing and pursuing him each and every day because he will never let you down. Hey, if you like this video or found it interesting, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and check out my website. Go to PastorAJ.com where you can sign up for my weekly email newsletter to stay connected with me. You can also drop me a message if you want to. I'd love to hear what God is doing in your life. Be blessed, friend, and I will see you in the next video. Later.